Coming up on Mountain News this morning, as hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians apply for unemployment, this week we saw the first increase in claims in more than six weeks. And we go to Lexington, where numbers show that nearly half of the city's COVID-19 patients are inmates at the Federal Medical Center. Plus, people living in one eastern Kentucky town have a curfew to think about now after a string of crimes in the area. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Connor James. The time is about 6.01 and we finally made it to Friday. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast. Good morning, Connor, and that's the best day of the week by far. So let's take a look and see, well, maybe not weather-wise, but the best day of the week in general by far. Let's take a look and see what's going on weather-wise this morning. Some patchy, dense fog down in the Cumberland Valley there. Harlan, at two miles of visibility. Everybody else doing okay on the sensors right now, but I assure you there's probably more fog out there than what we're picking up at the moment. We'll take a look at Mountain Parkway at Slade. A few cars moving along up there in Powell County this morning, but no major action there going on. Temperatures in the 60s area-wide, 67 Jackson, Prestonsburg, 62 Harlan. That's the range this morning. Most of us in the low to mid-60s. 82 today. 40% chance of scattered showers and storms as that front comes by. We back the rain chances off just a little bit because it does look to be more scattered. A very similar time pattern to yesterday. Maybe just a little bit more in the wave coverage. We'll talk about the extended forecast, including the beautiful weekend ahead in just a few minutes. Connor. All right, thanks, Brandon. Well, Governor Andy Bashir announced 113 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 and nine new deaths at last night's briefing. At last, at least 9,184 Kentuckians have tested positive for the virus since early March. The death toll now sits at 409. In regards to further openings in the state's economy, the governor said Kentucky Kingdom and possibly public pools could reopen in a limited fashion on June 29th. Well, the Pike County Health Department officials announced the county's 29th case of COVID-19 yesterday, and it's the youngest in the county to date. Public Health Director Tammy Riley says the five-week-old boy is currently in the hospital but is showing no symptoms of the virus, thankfully. No other details about the child are available, but Riley says younger children exposed to the virus are more likely to only show mild symptoms. Well, more than 800,000 Kentuckians have applied for unemployment since the COVID-19 pandemic started. and includes more than 53,000 in the week ending May 23rd. In the first time the state in its first time the state says it has seen an increase in claims in more than 6 weeks and still some people are waiting to receive benefits. WYMT's Phil Pendleton talked with one of them who fears the crisis will cause problems with her college education. Caroline Hughes thought she had her post high school plan all worked out. She worked at a daycare to save for college, but then the pandemic hit and she lost her job. Feels like I've been preparing my whole life to go to school and pursue my dreams and inspire children. And I call every day and I can't talk to anyone and I just feel very helpless. She filed March 23rd and nine weeks later, still no benefits have arrived. Absolutely, it feels very unfair, although I am very understanding and I know that these times are so unprecedented and no one could have prepared for this. Her story is like so many others we've heard. There's a dental hygienist who filed March 17th who still has not received any money or the woman who is trying to care for an elderly father with no money. We tried to get an interview with the state official for this story, but we were not successful. We were told we simply needed to wait for the five o'clock briefing with Governor Andy Bashir, and there someone for workforce development will be available to answer our questions. Hughes says with the CARES money, she's out about $3,500. And it says under investigation still, so it was really disappointing when um, the governor said that claims in March would be taken care of, and then mine wasn't. It was really disappointing. She says she planned so long for this and believes she's doing everything right, only to have her plans derailed. In Anderson County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Kentucky's latest unemployment rate was just a little more than 15% for the month of April. That is one of the highest in the nation right now. We should learn May's rate in mid-June.
Well, are you one of the 50,000 Kentuckians who filed for unemployment benefits in the last week, or have you seen a reduction in hours due to the coronavirus impact? The Team Kentucky Fund is now accepting applications for those who need assistance. The financial assistance helps with certain bills like utility payments, rent, and lease agreements. Visit teamkentuckyfund.ky.gov to submit an application. And we learned yesterday that the Kentucky unemployment system suffered a potential data security breach last month. Deputy Secretary Josh Benton says a user was able to view verification documents uploaded for other claims. That happened back on April 23rd. Benton says a software patch was made later that day. He says as of now, there have been no reports of identity theft. Governor Bashir has asked the inspector general to review what happened. Uh, to ensure that our software is where it needs to be and to review the practices and procedures. Uh, I want to make sure uh, that we respond, we respond quickly, and we respond correctly each and every time. The governor announced he's reorganizing the cabinet and moving the unemployment insurance group under the labor cabinet to help with processing. Well, the governor also announced last night that a privately owned prison in Floyd County will reopen to shift inmates from overcrowded jails. The 656-bed facility will be called the Southeast State Correctional Complex. Officials said it last held inmates in 2012. It's expected to provide more than 200 jobs. Now, last October, former Governor Matt Bevin also announced the prison would reopen, but when he left office, the future of the project remained unclear. Well, Lexington has 673 cases of COVID-19. Half of those cases are inmates at a federal medical center. According to the Lexington Fayette County Health Department, 268 inmates have tested positive. That includes 20 more from Wednesday. And of Lexington's 13 COVID-19 deaths, four were inmates at the federal prison. Health officials say the increasing numbers do not come as a surprise. When you're living in these close quarters, particularly places like a jail or this federal medical center, you see a, an increased likelihood of a spread. The facility is providing take-home test kits for its 500 employees. Well, during a tour of Kentucky, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell stressed the importance of wearing masks as the Commonwealth reopens. The senator said there should be no stigma for wearing a mask and that Kentuckians should act responsibly to avoid a spike in cases. Senator McConnell is in the midst of a re-election campaign. Well, the mayor of Pineville announced an executive order Wednesday night and put a curfew on the city of Pineville. WYMT's Emily Bennett talked with him yesterday as he said a string of thefts and other crimes forced him to make that decision. For several weeks, calls have flooded the Pineville Police Department. Eight or nine calls in one day in a small town like ours, that's a lot. Reporting thefts and other crimes. I am charged with protecting the people of Pineville and it's in their property and that's what I'm going to do. Which prompted Mayor Scott Maiden to put a curfew in place from 11 p.m. until 6 a.m. He thinks because police were not patrolling as much because of COVID-19, crime went up. I think that word got out that we weren't doing that. So they were more apt to be out running and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But now patrol will be stepped up. We're not going to let them destroy people's property anymore. We're not going to let them steal off of people. Uh, if they're out doing that, we're going to put them in jail. Mike Long has lived in Pineville for years. It's concerning. And continues to hear of people living on his street, having their belongings stolen off of their porches. Of course, I've got some cameras and some other stuff around my home that would actually capture those. And a lot of them are there now, especially with uh, what's been going on their home. For him, he is thankful action is being taken. They've made this change because of reactions to people calling them and telling them about there's a problem or they wouldn't have um, caused this. Hopeful crime will take a downward turn. In Pineville, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Maiden says those returning from work or work or those who work past curfew don't really have to worry. He is mainly worried about those who are walking in the alleys late at night.
mild start to this Friday morning and a dry one too. Maybe a little just moisture in the atmosphere with some fog, but that's about it. We'll take a look at these temperatures. 60s, pretty much area wide from 62 to 67 there. A lot of uh, 62 to 64 degree range temperatures there across our area. So a very mild start to the day. Coffee meter, iced coffee if you're heading out this morning, unless you just like a good hot cup of coffee like uh, I do when I first get up and may have to have another one here in a few minutes there. But again, it's just uh, it's a, it's a nice morning. So maybe have some coffee out on the porch and enjoy the nice weather before we see the cold front come through later today. And that's going to create some rain, not a whole lot of rain, but some. But this weekend, if you like cooler weather, if you like less humid weather, you're going to love it. And then high pressure returns. And you know what high pressure brings? Sunshine and a lot of it. Connor? All right. Thanks, Brandon. And thanks for joining us here on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, as masks become a polarizing topic, we take a look at how attitudes and requirements vary across the country.